My wife and I have three kids, a kindergartner and toddler twin daughters. My wife also has a tween daughter from a previous relationship. My wife and I love visiting a town a few hours away from us with the kids and decided this year to buy a house there. We've been looking at houses for a few months now and there's one thing we can't agree on. We can afford a three-bed, two-bath condo within walking distance from all the shops and restaurants, or a four-bedroom, two- or three-bath house, maybe a five- or ten-minute drive to everything. I want to get the condo and have the girls in one room and my son in the other. However, my wife doesn't want her daughter to share a room with the twins, so she either wants the four-bedroomed house or, if we have a three-bedroom, she wants to have the twins share with our son until we can eventually add a fourth bedroom, or her daughter goes to college and won't be travelling with us as much. I tried to compromise and find a house with a fourth bedroom for my stepdaughter that's still walkable, but my wife still doesn't like it because her daughter would be in the basement while the rest of us would be on the second floor. She says this house would isolate her daughter. Then she said she doesn't even want to be able to walk to the shops and restaurants because the double stroller is too bulky to bring into half of them, she'll have to deal with our son complaining about his feet hurting, and she can't even make that walk with the kids half the year when it's snowing. She has a habit of spoiling her daughter, and I think that's what she's doing here, at my and my kids' expense. Am I the idiot for wanting a house in a walkable neighbourhood, even if it means my stepdaughter will have to share a room? You are the idiot. Your solution is to shove her into a converted basement. She is just as much a member of the house as your kids. Don't try to shove her into some weird area that's separate from the rest of the living spaces in the house. Why don't you just go ahead and admit you dislike this poor child? Additionally, your wife is giving you input on what she wants in a home, and you need to pay attention to it. If you can't afford a house that fits everyone, and if the two of you can't compromise, then don't buy the house. Why don't you and your wife take the basement and let your daughter, son and twins have a room? That way the kids each get the space they need and deserve. Your daughter will also have some needed distance from an idiot stepfather who isn't thinking about her equally. Sorry, but you're planning to make your stepdaughter a nanny for toddlers. Yeah, precious baby boy gets his own room automatically, while the stepdaughter is set up to spend the next eight years babysitting the little girls. OP, you're a moron, and your tone of resentment is revealing. You accuse your wife of spoiling her daughter at your expense and the expense of your kids. Your stepdaughter is also your daughter now. And expecting a tween to share a bedroom with two toddlers is asking a lot. Toddlers are not easy, and your stepdaughter is almost a teenager, so the differences will only become more extreme. Also, squeezing three children in one small condo bedroom is a lot, even if the kids are all the same age. What's your reason? Just that you can walk to shops a little quicker? You're expecting your stepdaughter to take the hit. Not you. Why are you treating your stepdaughter's placement like a problem? Why don't you move the toddlers you fathered into your room? She never asked you to have more babies. Sticking a kid in a basement is something a villain in a fairy tale would do. In the meantime, your son gets his own room in every scenario. Yet you say your wife spoils the older girl. I gave birth to my and my husband's son last year and we named him Keen. The name wasn't popular among my husband's family. They have a long tradition of juniors. My husband, his dad, his grandpa, great-grandpa and great-great-grandpa all have the same first and middle name. We broke from tradition with our son with my husband's strong encouragement and support. Nobody really said much when he was born. We did notice some looks from his mom and sister especially, but as long as they weren't telling us to change it, then it's whatever. About a month and a half ago, they started to call my son Malcolm and Junior. Junior didn't bother me, but my husband spoke up when it was Malcolm and Mal and Malcolm Junior. They said it was just a fun little thing, that he's the first grandson and the first in generations not to get the name. He said we don't want him to be a junior. They assured us it would stop, but it didn't. My husband told them we should take a break from each other since they couldn't accept our son's name and continued to disrespect our choice by calling him what they wished we had named him. Sister-in-law sent me a Facebook message not long after, saying it was a dumb name, and we ruined our son's life by naming him after a band, especially a band that nobody his age will have heard of. I responded that she was entitled to her opinion, and it was a good thing she didn't need to be around us when she felt that way. Then, both my mother-in-law and sister-in-law showed up at home while my husband was at work. I answered the door, and they said we were over the top over a name, and that what was the harm in them calling our son the name he should have been given? I told him there was no name he should have been given, that we gave him a name we loved and felt would serve him well, and that name was not my husband's name, 
that he is not another junior and they should learn to accept that. They yelled that I was too controlling and rejecting a perfectly good name and destroying a family tradition. I shut the door in their face. They called my husband's work line and said I was rude to them and super controlling. He told me to ignore them. But I wonder if I should have left this whole thing alone with them. Am I the idiot? Not the idiot. Screw that nonsense. Start calling them Beryl and Linda just because that's what you prefer. Unless you're a royal in a dynasty, traditionally, when the oldest living Malcolm dies, all the suffixes go back down one, so Malcolm Jr. becomes Malcolm, third becomes Jr., etc. Only living people are traditionally included in the order. In my family, we have this fun tradition where every child gets their own name, chosen by the parents. I just couldn't break with tradition. Holy smokes. If sister-in-law is so set that a boy needs to be called Malcolm Jr., she can have one of her own. Your child's name is none of their business, and their refusing to call him by his name is petty and controlling. Hubby needs to tell him off, not just for that, but also for trying to corner you at your home and attempting to start stuff between the two of you by calling him. Huh. This reminds me of my mom's family when naming my sister. There had been a Winifred in my mom's family for generations, and my aunt Winnie told my mom she should call my sister Winifred to keep it going. My mom told her to name her daughter if she wanted to keep it going, but no way was my mom doing it. As sixth in the line of seven with the same name, sorry, your husband's family are such jerks. Nicknames are one thing, but these people are going to an extreme. Honestly, I wouldn't be able to see these people again without a huge apology and a change of behavior. Like, they showed up at your house to yell at you about you being mad at them for doing something they shouldn't be doing. Nope, nope, nope. You know how you can keep them from calling the kid junior? Keep the kid away from them. Problem solved. You need to stop responding. Get a doorbell camera so you can see who is outside. Don't answer their texts or calls. Your husband has put up a boundary with his family. Let him deal with their craziness. My brother was a single dad for the first six years of his son's life. Then my brother met his wife Emma and Emma's son Logan. Logan and my nephew had an oil and water relationship and weren't close. They were stepbrothers for about 18 months and had known each other for about three years when Logan died suddenly. Emma fell apart, unsurprisingly. My nephew confided in me a few times that he felt like everyone expected him to feel and react differently than he did. He told me he wasn't glad Logan was dead and it was sad, but he didn't feel like he'd lost anyone. He said he thought Emma was beginning to notice more since he wasn't crying and didn't have much trouble continuing with life as normal. I told him it was okay to feel that way, as long as he was compassionate of others, and if he needed to talk, he could always come to me. My nephew had a birthday three months ago and is nearly an adult, and he begged to move in with my family. Things were bad with my brother and Emma. About a year before, Emma had been quizzing my nephew about Logan and all things connected. Then, before Christmas, she decided to spy on my nephew and his friend. His friend had lost his dad and sister in a car crash, and my nephew was consoling him. She heard my nephew say he hadn't ever experienced a personal loss before and wasn't sure how it would go, but he would always let his friend talk. Emma went nuts on the boys and chased the friend off, who was already upset. My nephew ended up yelling at her, and the other boy's parents called my brother. My brother told my nephew he should be ashamed of himself for being so dismissive of his brother's death. This was when my nephew called. I was able to let him stay, primarily due to the police not wanting to drag him back to my brother's house. He called them, and my having already contacted CPS to talk about what was going on, and they sent someone to talk to my nephew and then my brother and Emma. So my nephew gets to stay with me. My brother has accused me of taking his son away from him and told me I should be ashamed of myself. He said it wasn't my place to get so involved. I told him I didn't take his son, he chose to leave, and that if he didn't want his son taken away, he should have been a better father. This was when he told me I was overstepping and I should see his point of view and how awful it is what my nephew has said and done. Am I the idiot? Not the idiot. If I'm reading the timeline right, this kid died when he was nine, and Emma and your brother are losing their minds that your nephew isn't grieving enough and spying on his social interactions to see whether he's sufficiently sad. That's wild. Both of them need professional help. I'm glad you're giving your nephew a safe harbor from this situation. OMG, this tension has been bubbling along for all this time. Eight years. Is Emma in grief counseling? It sounds like your brother isn't only failing as a parent, but also as a husband if he's failing to get his wife the support she needs, 
if she's still punishing her stepson. She's angry that he never felt the level of grief she wanted him to. Emma shouldn't expect a kid to grieve the loss of her son as she is. No one will grieve like she is. He's just being honest and doesn't sound like he's dismissing anyone else's feelings. OP, I'm glad your nephew has you. You are providing your nephew with shelter and a safe refuge. You need to clarify to your brother that your goal is to provide shelter for your nephew. Try not to get too involved with the family conflict and avoid the urge to judge your brother's parenting skills. Instead, encourage them all to seek counseling to try and resolve the conflicts. My dad died when I was seven and my mom remarried when I was nine. My mom's husband has a daughter the same age as me, Kerry. Kerry's mom is a crappy person and last year my stepdad learned that his ex stole from Kerry and took all the money my stepdad had saved for Kerry's college. Kerry was upset because she really wanted to go to college and what she wanted to do meant eight years in college. She wanted as much help as possible, but now it's all gone. They've been talking about it a lot and my stepdad tried to find a way to get more money since even though he pressed charges against his ex, the money is long gone and there's no way to get it back. My mom asked me if I would be willing to share the money dad left me for college with Kerry and she told me how good of a sister I would be to help her after being betrayed by her mom. That I didn't need to, but it would mean so much to everyone. I told her I didn't want to share the money with Kerry. Mom said okay, but then wanted to know why. I didn't tell her the whole truth initially and told her I just wanted to keep the money for myself since it was saved by dad and what he wanted for my future. But she didn't really buy that from me and a week or two later asked me again. So, I told her the truth, that Kerry and I are not close, we're not sisters and I don't want to help someone in such a huge way when I really don't care about them or even care if they're in my life. Mom told me she was surprised I felt that way. Then, I pointed out she and her husband have known for years. They used to point out how we never interacted like siblings and she told me she figured we still loved each other somehow. I told her I didn't anyway. Mom then told me I was wrong to refuse to help for that reason. Whether I liked it or not, we're siblings and family and Kerry deserves to have this. She told me I was being very selfish and she hoped my dad would be angry at me for not embracing Kerry as a sister despite our issues and not helping her. Then she told her husband what I said and he was angry at me. Am I the idiot? You are not the idiot and please make sure they can't get hold of that money. Your dad wanted that for you, no one else. Kerry has her own father to provide for her. Your mother is out of line. Carrie is your stepsister. You can acknowledge her as a sibling, but that doesn't mean you need to like her, love her, or give her your father's money. Right. That is not money your dad left for your mother's children's college. It's money your dad left for you. You have no obligation here. I would be angry if I provided for my child's future and they gave it away, but I wouldn't be angry that they used what I'd provided for them. I don't think your dad would be angry at you and I think it was manipulative of your mom to suggest he would. Exactly. This is the job of Kerry's dad and OP's mom to fix, since mom is so invested in this. No more vacations, no eating out, brown bag their lunches, move to a studio apartment in a cheap neighborhood, sell the house, take the bus, sell their cars, sell any other toys, boat, whatever. No more cable TV, etc. Oh, and liquidate all other savings, assets, etc until such time as Kerry's money is recovered. If they haven't done all this, asking OP to sacrifice is gross and wrong. If they have done all of this, asking is not necessarily wrong, but they still need to accept a no without comment or consequence. Asking OP to sacrifice before the parents have done so is disgusting. I, 21 male, recently started a full-time job that I absolutely hate. It's exhausting and annoying, and I absolutely hate it. I'm currently trying to find a new job, but I'm really not having much luck. Yesterday, my mom picked me up from work and I was venting to her about my day. It's worth noting that she's the one who convinced me to apply for my current job. I was venting about how exhausting my job is and how I'm having tough luck finding a new job. She eventually told me that whatever is happening, I'm proud of you for working hard at your job and fully joining the workforce. I will admit that I got a bit peeved and said, I honestly don't give a crap if you're proud of me. I'm unhappy and your pride in me isn't going to change that. So we spent the rest of the car ride home in silence. My dad told me that while he understands that I don't like my job, yelling at my mom was an extreme reaction. Am I the idiot? I do admit that yelling at mom was a bit extreme, but she needs to understand that her being proud of me isn't going to make me any happier at my job. 
Yes, you are the idiot. Based on your mom's statement, you haven't worked full-time until this job that you recently started. You also haven't mentioned any full-time school. So, absolutely, you're way too old to be yelling at your mom, your words, just because she was kind to you because you finally took the steps that you should have taken long ago. And I may add that your mom picked you up from work too, something that she should only be doing if unusual circumstances are at play here. You sound spoiled and entitled to me. Yep, 21 years old, being picked up from work by their mom and lashing out when she has nothing to do with why he's angry. Yeah, he fits the profile. Sounds like he wants to be the 30-year-old living in mom's basement demanding chicken tenders. Your mom was acknowledging that you're in a tough situation and she's proud of you for sticking it out. Were you fishing for her to tell you to quit and that she would support you financially until you find a job you like? Dude, she was trying to tell you that she loves you. Work sucks. You can be upset and gripe at her, but what did you want her to do? She can't wave a wand and suddenly make your job great. Would you have felt better if she told you how her job sucks too, or that this is it until you die? Just take the compliment and apologize to your mother, OP.